Hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films here. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the next installment of the Jurassic Park Legacy Reviews. But I'm afraid we don't have too much time, so I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. This production began shortly after the release of Jurassic World Dominion in the writing process and took a couple of years to put off the ground due to our 10th anniversary special and a few other projects we had to do on the side. And this is probably our most elaborate production with Jurassic Park and there's so many people to thank of the credits and you'll see them as they go past, but I couldn't have done it without all their support from the cast and crew and especially our supporters on Patreon. If you guys want to go donate to the channel, just a dollar or more will get you early access to all of our content as well as other special features. So we hope you enjoy this four-part endeavor be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and enjoy the show. And, oh, I believe it's lunchtime. Hopefully for us. Welcome back to Jurassic Park. Enjoy. The following is a fan-based video review under fair use. The Jurassic Park and Jurassic World IP are owned by Universal Pictures, Amblin Entertainment, Legendary Pictures, Netflix, Steven Spielberg, Frank Marshall, Kathleen Kennedy, and the Michael Crichton Estate. Please support the official release and streaming services. <laughs> To set up the temporary power wall to keep the predator paddocks and the carnivores out of reach from their backy wheat. We don't know how long it will hold though. Some of these animals are highly intelligent, including the unveiled the Statosaurus Rex. Wait, y'all have a V-Rex? How the hell did Ninja get an asset like that? A generous donation from anonymous source. <sighs> Christ, I'm gonna have to deal with that later. Well, with that said, Blue's got us covered. As pack leader, so there's no big deal, right? Fortunately, no. We have one other Alpha Raptor who may pose a problem. Try to keep her isolated from the rest of the specimens due to her troublemaking behavior. We tried to pack her in Blue, but she was too aggressive. She's been known to be a fence tester due to having the same genetic code as the original Raptor assets back in Nubler in 93. We came down their genetic structure, yet these animals still find a way to harness the same sense of tempo. <sighs> That's gonna be a problem. Are there any other predatory obstacles to overcome? Well, outside the Tyrannosaurus and the Raptors, you only gotta deal with an oversized Carnotaur and Mosasaurus if you want to get wet. An oversized Carnotaur? <laughs> The bull, as we call it, was an earlier asset from Sorna, part of the first batch before Grant's visit in 2001. We kept her under wraps for a while when the government got involved after Jurassic World. We took the plan from Dr. Wu, Injun, and Bison and made more specific modified security for the animals. It's one of the few highly dangerous specimens we don't give out to the public. The same can be said for the Dilophosaurus pack. We keep them glass, much like you do venomous snakes. So really, we only have a few carnivores to manage. Jesus, tap dancing Christ, this was the biggest mistake ever. Okay, 
here's the plan. We have to evacuate at a good pace, but there's still a few in harm's way. The first objective is to keep the carnivores at bay, diverting them away from the crowds, and attempt to sedate them in the jungles outside of the park areas. Once we get enough time, we'll leave the rest to evacuate to the ferries. By that point, mainland marines can recapture the dinosaurs and get the park back at full power. I'll go solo to the hidden path of the visitor center, which will be a rendezvous point to meet up with the remaining evacuees. Hammond, I'll have you keep an eye on us here in the control room. Bones, you guys will take the rest of the group for roundups. The rest will be with the first group guarding the control room. If I may, Big Jack Killers, I don't think I'll qualify for such a trek for the roundup. Why not allow me to head up the base ahead of time? Because I don't trust you, you dipshit! Alright, let's sit up, boys. Wizard Hammond. Please, reset with him. You have the key code to the emergency gate, so it's best that he goes ahead, Jack. <sighs> okay, fine. I'll send an escort group with him. God damn it, John. Okay, folks, get the guns ready. We want everything on standby. We need a plan of action, folks. Let's go! Hey, go to the free of asset safe and secure. At the visitor center, We're waiting for you. Where the hell are you? Over. We have to regroup. The police a tracker on me. Get them off my back! Listen, this might be more difficult than we thought. Bring them to the center. One of our assets is due for the feeding time. So let her do it? As long as I get my cut, and out without a trace. Then we're square. We got two hours. We promise to stop it at. One more down. Okay, Clayton, I need those guns from the armor stacked. Well, folks, since we're on this little short trek here, I figured it would be a good opportunity to talk about a short subject that's canonical to the Jurassic Park legacy. And this particular short film is directed by Colin Trevorrow, who actually directed the fourth and sixth film in the franchise. And don't worry, we'll talk about Dominion next. This, of course, being Jurassic World Battle at Bitrock. Taking place shortly after the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, this short film focuses on a campsite in the mountains known as Big Rock. Well, great. Knowing Big Rock Mountain, the only real threat this family has to face is God Zooks. <laughs> if any of you remember that Rankin Bass special that's a canonical sequel to Santa Claus is Coming to Town, you have my utmost respect. Maybe someday I'll review that during actual Easter. Why, he gets almost as much as Santa. Here we see a family enjoying the great outdoors, minus the jolly fun of John Candy, with the father, played by Andre Holland, his wife, played by Natalie Martinez, and their kids, played by Melody Hurd and Pearson Salvato. But during the night, the camp is invaded by uninvited guests in the vein of a herd of dinosaurs migrating from the coasts of Lockwood Manor most prominently a herd of Nasutoceratops. Well, ain't that the oldest deer this side of Ohio? Hey, Steve, is that why you got the Wonder Boner? Buddy, you should ask. I ain't sick of that, don't ask, man. But as the babies start to give us that classic Baby Yoda syndrome, I'm sure nothing bad can happen. I mean, look at this little girl. Totally not... Uh, probably. It's short-lived with the appearance of a fully grown adult Allosaurus, as the herd and the families all retreat into the trailers. Can you say this didn't work before? Hang on, this is gonna be bad. And as the giant predator of the literal Jurassic attacks, the established family must escape its practical jaws and survive as the dinosaurs have now entered the mainland. So, long story short, in my first impressions, I was actually surprised when this short canonical film dropped after the disastrous disappointment of Fallen Kingdom. Granted, the movie did well, but it felt like we needed to wait a bit to see what happens in the next installment. But to hold us over, it was nice to see Colin Trevorrow, who directed the first Jurassic World, and later Dominion, coming in to give us this very entertaining surprise, which aired on both television and YouTube simultaneously. 
At the time, nobody knew this was happening, and honestly, that's for the better, because short films like this that are canon to the series are a new, but welcoming concept to the franchise. Beforehand, we had seen fan films, and shorts trying to weave their way into the series, but being from Universal themselves was actually kind of respected, and the short itself stayed true to the Jurassic legacy prominently more than the last installment at the time, with the original film's tension and terrors, amazing cinematography and lighting, great use of practical effects for a short like this, and even this little family I bought for the most part. There isn't much to talk about in characters, but I'll give major props to the small cast on this one for not only showing incredible talent, but really working off each other and giving us much more expansion to the Jurassic well world that shows even the average Joe what it takes to survive a dinosaur attack. It kind of reminds me of films like Grizzly, which while a ripoff of Jaws, or for that matter any particular killer animal movie, it's pretty cool to see here. But what I will say is that the dinosaurs are well represented here. Yeah, sure, we get to see cameos from other dinosaurs in the end credits, but it's cool to see the likes of two dinosaurs that are either not really well known or infamous, but never introduced in the series. The Natsutoceratops are a welcome addition to the series. Granted, it's a new species that was recently discovered, and it's kind of questionable how InGen or Biosyn got the DNA samples to make these creatures in a short period of time. But it's cool to see other Ceratopians outside of the Triceratops make an appearance in this series. Yeah, sure, in Fallen Kingdom we saw other Ceratopians. Yet no love for the Styracosaurus, what the hell, guys? But the not so Noceratops is a welcome addition, kind of reminding me of the Taurosauruses from Walking with Dinosaurs. Not to mention the baby, of course, being kind of adorable. It's a baby one! However, the most infamous and prominent dinosaur in this short is none other than the Allosaurus, and this time a full-grown specimen. In the previous film Fallen Kingdom, we had only seen juvenile species on and off the island, and its only appearance in other parts of the franchise was both in different variants of the book and in action figure form with the toys by Kenner. However, it's really cool to see a full-scale Allosaurus in this film. Granted, he was a popular dinosaur in other films prior to that, from The Lost World, The Valley of Guanji in 1 million years BC, among other dinosaur media, most notably Walking with Dinosaurs, which is one of my favorite creature designs of the Allosaurus. And this one is not only bigger, but much more fiercer. And by the end of it, actually having sort of a blind eye. And believe it or not, this Allosaurus would be mostly prominent in Jurassic World Chaos Theory. In fact, it's the same bloody creature that attacks the family here. So it's nice to know that this particular Allosaurus gets a lot of love. I haven't seen much love for this creature since Big Al in the Walking with Dinosaurs spinoff. So it's always cool to see this creature get its comeback in some part in film. Because how many times can you do the Tyrannosaurus Rex without it getting somewhat old? Okay, Jurassic Park 3 doesn't count. The other thing I need to make mention is the camera and lighting on this one. Granted, this is Colin Trevorrow's quality as a director, especially given the fact that this was a top-secret production that Universal offered him while he was writing the script for Dominion, but major credit needs to go to cinematographer Larry Fong and lighting technician and gaffer James McGuire for making use of this short scenario and giving us scares that stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the original film's visual horrors. Lighting is something I don't really bring up in my reviews, but given as a step-by-step -step filmmaker who was always learning from the last project, lighting is probably my most prominent in learning, and I say that for any filmmaker out there, it's really the most challenging. And some of the shots in this one are downright brilliant here, like the silhouette of the Allosaurus roaring at the family by the campfire light. God damn, is that iconic. Speaking of, Holy crap, the use of practical effects on this thing is fucking phenomenal. It would have been so easy to just save money on this short by utilizing the CGI of Industrial Light and Magic for the dinosaurs here, much like Colin did on Jurassic World. But I'll give him and Universal major credit for creating a full-size animatronic Allosaurus for this movie. Designed and handled by Legacy FX, the company evolved and adapted from Stan Winston Studios after the creator's sad passing in 2008. 
who we also lost Michael Crichton the same year, and the reason we almost never got a Jurassic Park 4 during that decade of development hell. It's a constant need to raise the bar, and we've, uh, we've nailed it. I, I say we've nailed it, of course, Jurassic Park 4 will be showing us how much we didn't nail. <laughs> That's the last time I leave you in charge. And for what they had going, it's shocking to see animatronics like this used on a short film, and that was pretty damn impressive. The Jurassic Park Legacy Reviews will be right back. Hungry for power? Yes! Scan Command is the only game that converts barcodes you scan into power. Scan for strength, speed, skill. Turn your dinosaur into the ultimate fighting champion. Scan Command includes Scanner, Jurassic Park computer game, and accessory rated E for everyone. And check out scan-command.com. Yes! What? Scan Command. We now return to the Jurassic Park Legacy Reviews on Big Jack Films have stated this to be an amazing short as it is. While airing on YouTube and on TV on September 15th, 2019, it's kind of surprising that this thing didn't debate at 2019 San Diego Comic Con or something, cause honestly, it would have been quite the crowd pleaser at Hall H on par with the success of the fan film Batman Dead End. Even the credits to the film are great, not just showcasing the pandemic of dinosaurs in the mainland after Fallen Kingdom and the possibilities of more scenarios like this, but the use of the Lost World theme really brought a smile to my face, and huge props to composer Amy Dougherty for the score in this short that honestly makes me want to see the composer get a shot at Jurassic 7. That or the return of Don Davis. It's a shame Universal doesn't use this theme more for the new films, cause I think The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3, in terms of music, needs to make more of a comeback. And given this franchise has had a hit or miss comeback, I think the short films is where the franchise should keep going. Despite the fact that Jurassic Park 7 is happening. And yes, I know it's called Rebirth. Much like how Disney is creating movies and shows to expand the Star Wars saga, I think it would be an ingenious and cost-effective idea to expand the Jurassic Park legacy with essentially a short film anthology series. Not only would it be inexpensive, but can turn a few valuable profits for Universal. You can even give it to different yet new upcoming filmmakers to give them a shot at the franchise and a spotlight to showcase different healthy takes on the material as a test to see if they can helm a movie. Not to mention seeing different filmmaking skills, and the possibilities are endless in the canonical timeline with the viral marketing. You could even expand on it, do one on the pteranodons coming into the mainland after Jurassic Park 3, or a presentation video from InGen building the park in the 80s. Hell, even news segments on the discussions of the animals. Hell, give me a Cloverfield-esque short from the POV of a DV tape on the T-Rex attack in San Diego. Many filmmakers are taking advantage of that concept and coming up with horror horrifying scenarios that are damn entertaining, and I even consider canon. In fact, Universal's kind of doing it with the marketing of the recent world films on many of their websites. I think there is more to tell of this story in this format if Universal pushed it as a marketing hype to make the lore of Jurassic Park more interesting. Now I know there's one more short film in this series, but given it was made to be part of the next film as the extended cut, I'll save it for next time. But overall, Battle of Big Rock is a new specimen in the franchise exposed to the minds of its fans, and it delivered with flying colors, filled with great effects, camera work, and creativity. It's a good little high back to Jurassic Park, and major credit has to go to Colin Trevorrow, the cast and crew, and Universal for this fun little treat for the fans. It's really something the franchise, among others, should strive to do more of, and give it to new creative minds and fans of the series, with an enlightening and encouraging 9 out of 10. Sort of a short review in this scenario, but we got one big finale to get through, so it's time to move on. And hey, this is a short film, so it's basically a short review. And this was one to definitely cover, and I hope Universal takes a note to produce more of these amazing shorts for the Jurassic Park legacy.
Is that dynamite? Flares, but not for rescue. What for then? Bait. Says this. These plants are reversed from the Jurassic period. They were genetically grown here for the original island. Once Isla Adventure opened up, samples were shipped here to grow in the wild to give the animals more of a familiar scene to their 65 million year old past. We're crossing the herbivore territory. I got eyes on broken branches. Bones, Clayton, can you read the track? Yes, I do. Brachiosaurus. The herd must have been just dropped by some larger animal. A predator? Yeah, my guess is your time and lizard friend. I doubt it. Tyrannosaurus doesn't cater to Brachiosaurus. It mostly feeds on Ceratopians. You ever seen Disney's dinosaur? Yeah. Then we're probably dealing with something a little bigger in that nature. Stay alert. After what Lau told us, things may be unpredictable. Carnotaurus. And this one's bigger than any of the other specimens on the island. I'm moping into it, Jack. It says the files were taken out by one Redland Ranger. Redland Ranger? What the hell was he doing here snooping around in Jet? Well, why don't you ask him? I'm gonna get shit box fuck stick in this mess, we living in a park as come can. Man, Roger, we really gotta fix that voice box of yours. You think InGen is keeping this one secret? Maybe they're cloning other experiments behind those clothes exhibit. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh! tracks for this one? 400 milligrams. Pump them out and ship them out. On it. Let's move. Set up the track. Let's get this animal moving, people. I've got the ass Nah, don't worry, kid. We'll take it from here. Visitor sent us only a few clicks off from our position. We we cover more ground if we split up and fast the time to round up and get all the animals. Good call. We've already gained ground with the assets rounded up faster than expected. Props to new management that they have these animals better secured than I ever seen in the park. We're heading to the center together. Hopefully we can get the park back up and running and find out what's going on. Now watch out. We're getting pretty close to the raptor paddock. <laughs> Something, that's for sure. God, what about ours? Shh, quiet down. Let's well, go look at that. Jeez. No, no.
What? No. Heading towards the visitor center. Should we inform Agent Lau? No, no. But ensure Sussex will secure it. Yes, sir. 